Kew. Known as the Queen of the Murchison and some 80 k's north of Mount Magnet on the Great Northern Highway, it's a great little spot to stop, take a break from the drive and have a drink and refresh. You can admire the heritage buildings in the main street and just have a look around this quaint little town. Or you can turn left. Now if you did turn left and head west out along the typical wide streets of Goldfield Towns, you'll notice a couple of old buildings and you'll notice this funny looking thing coming up on the left hand side. This is the old Masonic Lodge. Now we're going to head out west past the 24 hour fuel stop and we're going to have a look 30 k's away at a place called Big Bell. Now, Big Bell is a gold mine, and this is gold country, of course. Gold was discovered in the area around the start of the 1900s by a guy called Peyton. Now, between 1904 and 1926, when the mine out here closed, the ownership of the mine changed a number of times. In 1935, the premier gold mining company owned the mine, and they announced plans to develop it, and they called it the Big Bell Mine. The following year, the state government built a railway that connected Kew and Big Bell, and the town of Big Bell was born. It ran with a population of around 800 until 1955. The town boasted the hotel, which you can see here, a picture theatre, modern shops, several churches, typical houses of the 1930s, 40s and 50 times, complete with a little patch of green lawn out the front. But just a word of warning, Big Bell is still an operational mine, so if you stay within the boundaries of the town. The mine was quite productive and it was quite a going concern, which is why it lasted 20 odd years. But although the town was sizable and had good facilities, it was a hard life out here. It was dry, it was dusty, work was hard and living was hard. In 1950, there were two fatal incidents. On January the 13th, there was a rock that fell down the mine shaft and the blast of air that was created when it landed killed two men outright. And in March the 10th of the same year, two timber mine workers were killed when they were struck by the counterweight of the cage as the cage ascended. The counterweight came down, knocked them into the shaft and they fell several hundred feet to the bottom, dying instantly. Ultimately, the mine closed in 1955, and you get a sense from looking around the ruins, like this old church here, just how tough life out here would have been. Two of the buildings left surviving are churches. It makes you wonder if religion was a way of escaping the hardness of the life out here. Work, eat, sleep, work, drink at the bar, work, eat, sleep. Religion and Sundays was a, possibly a social occasion more than necessarily a religious occasion. Anyway, now we're going to go up one of the side streets and we're going to have a look at another ruins that we think is the church. On the way, we're passing foundations and when we look at the foundations, they're just a thin capping of concrete over rocks and boulders. get out here and we're going to wander into what we're pretty sure by now is the church.
gets us with Big Bell is actually the size of the establishment. For 800 people, the town is quite vast. When we've just been out to see Niagara Dam that had 1,200 people in the town of Niagara there, and yet it seemed a smaller location with more facilities. I'm thinking that back in Niagara, which was around the 1900s, late 1890s, everything was smaller. They were living in little shacks, whereas here in Big Bell, they were living in houses. And as such, you know, bigger plots of land, and hence the town site itself seemed bigger. But there was only 800 people here. Okay, it's lunchtime and we're going to look for a little piece of shade. There's not much here. There's no picnic tables or picnic shelters. So we're going to look for a little patch of shade that we can have lunch. Then we're going to wander over and have a look at the hotel. male and 400 female and then you say that a hundred of those would have been children so you're looking at it's a big space for such a small amount of such a yeah I small mean, population when you look at this board yeah panoramic view of big bell taken from the tower which is the water tower i presume yeah so where we are here, I imagine is where the pub is. Yeah. Down there. And, um, and you compare it to Niagara, which had what, 1,200? Mm. In 1905? Yeah. And this is a population of about 850. It just means that there was a lot more structure. Fine place. So it's fenced off, but big gaps in the fence. Just kind of open everybody to come in. I still think it's sad that like every other icon or anything we have, people have to go and tag it. <laughs> so they've been here. I mean, if we popped in every time we came out, you'd see the detail. Okay, so that's it for Big Bell. It was back on the road, back into Kew, heading north for Karajini. Unfortunately, just as we left Kew, we started having vehicle problems with it misfiring. And we figured we picked up a batch of shitty fuel down in Mount Magnet and we never quite made it to Karajini. We ended up pulling into a roadhouse and uh, getting a little worried whether it was going to be the end of our journey. <laughs>